What do we mean by glory? To glorify someone. What does that mean? Exalt them. Exalt them. To put them higher. To raise them up on a pedestal. Is that what, is that what we're thinking? All right, like Patrick Mahomes, right? He is glorified. He is. He's, the dude's making half a billion dollars. I just want to have you get that through your head, right? He's doing all these commercials and everything. Even when he cost us the Bills game last week. Even then, even then. But yet, does anybody ever criticize him? <laughs> On video. No, but most of the time, he's not. He's, he's a pretty amazing person as a football player, pretty amazing. And people literally embrace him, right? They almost glorify him, right? They bring him to a stature of, you know, exalting who he is. Is God, as a Christian, most people in here are Christian, do you think you glorify him, bring glory to him? How do you do it? I pray to him, I think about him, I read about him every day. So it's very personal yeah. in your personal life, right? Yeah. Right, and he knows it, so that I agree 100%. Um, Mahomes gets glory different, though. We don't all go home in our living rooms and sit around the table with our kids and go, let's just talk about Patrick and how awesome he is, but we don't want to tell anyone else. Let's just keep it in the house or on Sunday. Let's do this. We'll pick a day. Every Tuesday at 3 o'clock, we'll all get on a uh, Zoom meeting, and we'll talk about Patrick. But we don't want to talk about him in public too much, right? No, it's the opposite, right? All right, so does anybody glorify God publicly? How do you do it? T-shirts. <laughs> T-shirts. Right. So how many people in here have a Patrick Mahomes shirt, a number 15 Chiefs shirt? I like Kelsey. I get a Kelsey shirt. So you guys, all right, so some wear them because literally they want to identify with them, right? Um, so is that how we glorify God? Wearing the right apparel? Praying on our own? So what you're doing, what he's doing is he's, talking about the effect glory has on you personally because there's some, something at stake here. So should we think about who we give our praise to, our adulation to, based on what could happen to me if I do or the, stake invo the stakes involved? Should we? No. Doesn't make any sense, does it? And yet that's the way it is, right? We sit here and we say, okay, I had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. I know him personally. He created the universe. I'll be in heaven with him for eternity. But the stakes are high if I say anything, because it could be a problem, and it could, could re result in a revolution or something terrible. So I've got to be careful how I do it. Is that, is that how we think? And it's probably how we think, isn't it? You see how stupid this is? If we really believe in him, I think this is one of the problems with Christians, is we don't actually think of him that way. So let's, let's take a look at biblically. Three ways God tells us, he literally tells us, he's glorified. The first way, he says, is in creation. All right, he, makes, he makes a point of making sure we all understand that he's excellent, his name is excellent, that's Shem in the Hebrew, that means his character, who he is as a person, is excellent because he set his glory, who he is, in the things that we see in creation, right? We've went all the way through book two, looking at science, we've looked at all these things to see how science clearly points to the existence of a creator. So far, so good? Bless you. Without a doubt, he said this. <laughs> Right? In John, he said, all right, here's the deal. The way you're going to understand who Jesus Christ is is because you're going to see his Father in him. The radiance of Yahweh is going to be in Jesus Christ. And so we've studied like 17 lessons on Jesus Christ, right? And we've gone through his claims, fulfilled prophecy, um, his miracles, uh, his ministry, um, how other secular people looked at him in, in history, to all point to the fact that the creator of the universe, Yahweh, actually put his seal on only one person in history, and that's it. And we can tell the difference when we look at different people who make similar claims. 
and then us. <laughs> he literally says <clears throat> that the way Yahweh is going to be glorified is in how we live and what we say and, and the things we do. Literally, that's what's going to happen. So when we think about the Father and us being Christians and how the Father is exalted on the, in the earth, right, in, in, uh, in our lives, it's going to be through us if we allow it, right? But if, we, if our big thing is the stakes are too high, do you think progressivism and leftism is worried about this, their stakes being too high? No, they, they know what they want, and they're zealous about it. They're not, they, you may look at things they say, people who are non-believers, but are very, this, this Marxist agenda that's going on. And you may say to yourself, they're lying to me. You, know, you hear these things, you think they're lies? But the truth is, they really believe this. They're passionate. They're willing to get out there, right? And I think this is part of what's going on in our country. We're kind of not. So I wanted to show you this because it's really important when you study the Bible to look at this and see it. 